that we may hear a word from the Lord. Uh, speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit, God. Um, give me the words that will bring new life, God. Your message of love for your people. God, I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us um, so that we might hear you clearly, so that you might be high and lifted up. encouraged and we might know that no matter what's going on no matter where we are in life that you are with us and that that is enough God thank you for bringing us to this point thank you for everything that you've done and thank you because we know you are here with us and so we know that we will not leave here the same way that we came but that having an experience with you we will be whole and that we will be changed God, I pray that you will soften our hearts to the movements of your spirit, to the words that you have for us, um, that we might just be able to find rest here in this place and joy and peace with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. <laughs> um. So yeah, so last week we started a series, um, our, our happiness, I can't remember the name of it actually, Love and Happiness, there we go, Love and Happiness series, and um, last week we talked about why did I get married, and today we're going to talk about living single, living single, and so if you have your Bibles, um, and you can open with me, or your phones, Open with me to 1 Corinthians, um, verse, chapter 7, verse uh, 29. Yes, verse 29. Um, if you have it, can you say, I'm with you. I'm with you. You're with me. It is 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29. If you're there, say, I see it. I see it. Amen, amen. And, and so it reads, But this I say, brethren, the time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. And so, um, while I'm speaking under the title of Living Single, and yes, these are for, this, this message is for my single Brothers and sisters, this is a message also for those who are married, um, for those who may be widowed, for those who are dating, all of you. So don't just tune out because you're not single, okay? <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. Um, so in preparation for this um, message this week, um, it just so happened that I ended up having a conversation with one of, my, one of my brothers, actually a couple of my brothers who are here at the church, and it was a conversation about working out. And um, the, the, the message or the, the question was raised, like, why do you work out? Like, what is really the motive for working out? Um, and, and it was stated that, you know, we got to make our temples look good for our future spouses, yeah. right? And, and I, but I, felt, I, took issue, I took issue with that, okay? I took issue with that. Um, but what was surprising for me was um, that that was, that was the perspective of, of my brother. You know what I'm saying? Because typically what you see is women look good for their spouse by working out. And men, what I thought, right, was that men um, work out so that they can be like strong and be like defenders and providers for their wife, right? That's, what, that's the motive that I thought was happening. Um, but what's, what's actually happened commonly in that conversation, what was revealed is that things have switched. To where now as a woman, I work out so I feel like I can protect myself and provide for myself. And as a man, I look good because I, I want to look at myself and feel good about myself. You know what I'm saying? And so that perspective shift was so crazy to me. But what it still revealed was we're still worried about how we're perceived, right? So a man looks good so that his bros can be like, oh yeah, dude, like I want to look like you. And a woman 
protect, can protect herself so that other women are like, oh, I want to be like you so I can protect myself. You know, we're still, we're still worried about how we're perceived by men and women. And so what that may look like is we may um, slip on a pair of jeans, right? And with it comes the opinions of the men or women in our lives or the, or the hot takes of the influencers on social media, right? We try our best to fit in to whatever is seen as the best or the newest trends or, could someone help me actually? Would you mind holding this mic? Thank you so much. Or, thank you. Or we, as men, right, we're gonna button up our shirt. Okay, we're gonna button up our shirt and with it, you know, comes the preferences of the women we admire um, or the men that we think um, we should be like. And, and one after another, after another, until we're up to our neck in preferences, doing this and that and the thank you. And the third, and we're trying this diet and we're trying this workout and we're trying this supplement and we're trying this steroid until mm. we can't breathe. Until we Let's feel <laughs> as if we can't just be ourselves. Yeah. You know? And Paul is encouraging us in 1 Corinthians to remain as we are called. If you turn with me, still in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, but verse 17, it says, but as, but God has distributed to each one as the Lord has called each one. So let him walk, and so I ordain in all the churches. Okay? And he goes on to talk about if you're circumcised, remain uncircumcised. If you're circumcised, remain circumcised. If you're a slave and you can't get out of bondage, use it for the glory of God. And so what he's saying here is that if you dress, if your style of dress is like old woman or whatever, then dress like an old woman and rock it. You know, if you if you look like I don't know, you know, then look or however you however you were made to, to walk in how you were made. If you sound like, um, I mean, obviously, if you sound like you know those those old um, radio men, you know what I'm saying, then sound like that. But if you also if you also sound, you know, if you're a tenor. Right, and your voice is a little higher, then, then use that for the glory of God. As you seek after the Lord and align your life with his will, those differences are not things to be dismissed or altered or covered up. On the contrary, these are things that, um, that our differences are things that uniquely equip us to reach people that others cannot for the kingdom. However, this is not license to sin. Mm. Right? So it's not to say, oh, well, God made me this way, so I, mu I must be called to it. Right? We should not continue doing things that are unhealthy or unholy and justify them by saying that um, we're reaching the, those people in these areas. Okay? Because God hasn't called us to a life of sin. Okay? So however, wherever you are, whatever your giftings Use them for the, will, for the work of God, right? But don't stay where you are and just justify it because you're there, right? Um, but we should do, what we should do is, is share those times, share those experiences in our lives when we were in those places because those are testimonies of the goodness of God, that he is powerful, that he is loving, that he is faithful, right? And we should not be ashamed of those, even, even wrestling with the thing. Right? Like, let's say I'm not out of it yet. Even the testimony of I'm still here wrestling can be um, used by God to empower those who are in a similar um, situation. And so as we continue um, in verse, we, we reach verse 29. So we, we were at 17 and then, um, oh, okay, yeah. And then we go to 29, which is the verse that we read previously, which is that, but this I say, brethren, the time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wise, wives should be as though they had none. And, and you may say, okay, Maya, 
I, like I'm married and like um, I want my husband to be like he has a wife. <laughs> like I, I hear you and I'm with you. I'm with you and all, but like my husband needs to know he has a wife. Okay. Um, that's, but that's not what we're talking about here. Actually, um, the verses before in verse 27 it says, "Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be loosed. Are you loosed from a wife? Do not seek." A wife, but even if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh, but I would spare you. And so, what Paul is talking about here is not um, that being single is more holy than being married, or being married is more holy than being single. He's he's talking about how, as a single person, we have the privilege to seek after God and, and have God be our single and sole devotion without distraction, yeah. right? When we get married and we become one, we are, we're bound, like we're called to prioritize that other person. But as a single person, the only person that needs to be one in my life, the only person I need to prioritize is God. And so he's just, he's just talking about our, our, how we can, our freedom to move without the burden of responsibility and care for another person. And so then he's encouraging the married people to be like that. Mm. That, that yes, you have a husband. Yes, you have a wife. Love them. Care for them. Be responsible for them. But don't let them take the place of God. Amen. And so often, um, our, going back to perspective, right? Our perspective as single individuals um, isn't so isn't so good, right? Like that sounds really good. Like as as a single person, we we're better in Paul's eyes because we're freer um, to we're in a better position to worship God and to have Him be the sole person, right? But often in our society, um, that's not the case. We're 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 quick to find our one. Right? We don't want to become the spinster, or, or even as the bachelor, right? It's not that they're alone. The lifelong bachelor in society is often just together with multiple to people. You know what I'm saying? So he's not married, but he's not alone. Um, and so we find ourselves um, as single men and women then trying to be one with the other person the other gender or person wants, partner wants, or two, trying to prove like we don't need anyone, mm. right? So that's where we get that perspective shift in the beginning that we were talking about, where, um, you know, as a woman, I need to show that I'm independent. You know, I don't need no man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> as a man, as a man, right? I'm gonna show that, no, I take care of myself. Like, I go to the gym, I'm, I'm cool, like, I can cook, I can, you know what I'm saying? I don't need a woman, right? Um, but Paul is calling us to a life where looking at what other people want, looking at what um, their, their per perception of us, looking at those things, it doesn't matter. Where our focus is solely on God whether married or single. And, and again, this doesn't mean that marriage is bad. In fact, in verse 36, it says, um, but if any man thinks he is behaving improperly toward his virgin, and this is, um, in this context, this is a father with his virgin daughter, right? Because the father would give the daughter in marriage, okay? So if a man, the father, thinks he is behaving improperly toward his virgin daughter, if she is past the flower of youth, and thus it must be, um, let them, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin, let them marry. And them being his daughter and her suitor, not the yeah. father and the daughter. Okay, <laughs> just clarity. So yes, and so this doesn't mean, Paul is not saying that marriage is wrong by any means. But just that Christ should be first in our life. And highlighting the fact that as a single person, we have that, that unique opportunity to do so. Um, and so um, one of my favorite quotes, as, as a woman who, who, is, who desires to be married at some point, Lord willing, right? Um, is, is this. It's by Maya Angelou. And it says, a woman's heart 
should be so hidden in God that a man has to seek him just to find her. And, and while there's no man equivalent, oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. What does that mean? We're getting there, we're getting there. While there's no male equivalent, right, we can infer that it's true that um, if a man, while seeking God, finds a wife, He's found a good thing. And we, and we see that in Proverbs 8, 22. Right. Um, but again, it just brings us to like, so if singleness is so great, why, why do we focus on marriage so much, right? Why is it so, why is it so important? Um, and, <laughs> and so um, what, what we see is that, right, if I'm a woman and I'm, and I'm hidden in Christ, what that looks like is me, is me um, seeking after God. It's me knowing whose I am, right? And then I know his love. And because I know his love, I'm able to identify somebody who loves me like him, right? Yeah. And then our union is one that actually shows the love of Christ. It's not just one where we do ministry together, but it in and of itself is the ministry of God and shows the picture of, of him and the church. Right. And, and the reason why this is such a big deal, the reason why we get caught up in these things, the reason why I was like, didn't really want to preach on this as a single woman in front of all of you guys, right? <laughs> is because in society, marital status is so important. Right. It's so important. I was doing my taxes, because it's tax season coming up, <laughs> and um, it was like marital status. And I'm like, okay, I'm single. <laughs> and, and, and I just moved here. I just became like a, a, a Michigander. And so I moved all my, you know, physicians and everything, right? And I went to the optometrist, right? And they're like, marital status. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with my eyes? <laughs> we did it sing single. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and we have to put our marital status on so many things, right? <laughs> Identity, like yes. your name, Maya Stewart, marital status, single. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 part of who I am. Uh-huh. And 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 what we see here is that God through Paul is calling us to separate the two, right? So what we've done is we've taken marital status, oops, not that one. We've taken marital status and we put it on. Mm-hmm. And we put it on as part of who we are, right? It's getting so hot up here, I did not think of this thrill. <laughs> but maybe I did, you know, because we're not supposed to be putting on all these things because then we can't function hey, the way that the Lord has I'm called ready. us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so God is, is calling us away, away from this ideology, uh, this ideology that my marital status is me, right? Um, and there's a story... Um, I, t- I tell, I don't know how often I tell it, but I love this story. Um, and my dad's watching it, and it's about him, so hi, Dad. Love you. Um, and what happened was, I was going to New York by myself. I drove by myself. Um, he was not happy, um, but I, I drove by myself to New York. And um, I was there visiting some friends, and, you know, we were going to go out to New York. It's like, she's from there. You know, I, I feel like I'm safe, she knows. He's raised me to be aware of things, you know, <clears throat> and and so yeah, and so I, I call him and I tell him, yeah, I'm in New York, da, 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 da. we're gonna go out, da, da, da. and he's like, okay, make sure you have, make sure you have your valuables. Oh my goodness, I left it down there. Make sure you have your valuables. Could you pass them that please? The other one. Yes. Make sure you have your valuables, and I was like, yeah, Dad. Like, I have a fanny pack. I'm gonna put my, my phone has like all my cards in it. I was like, I'm gonna put it in my fanny pack. It's gonna be locked and secured, you know? It's gonna be in front of me. Nobody's just gonna be able to like, you know, all these things that we see happen in New York, right? Um, and he was like, yeah, cool, but like, but your ID and, your, and your, your bank card, like you need to keep that like close, right? You need to keep it close. And um, for us women, we know we have a secret, a secret pocket. We have a secret pocket that we can keep things really, really close, right? We can keep things really close. And so I was like, okay, Dad. I was like, I didn't tell my dad that, but I was like, I was like, okay, Dad, I have a place. I'm gonna keep it really close. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it really close, right? I'm gonna keep it really close. And 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 the reason is, is that if somebody did come, right, I could take off that fanny pack. Right? Or my purse. Right. It was a fanny pack, but it'll be a purse for now. I can take off 
and run the other way, right? Or I can take off my jacket and toss it and run the other way, right? right? I can take all of these things off, but what will stay with me is my ID and my access to my resources. Those things will always stay with me. So I don't have to worry about who comes doing what, saying what. I'm going to be okay. And so sometimes what we do in life, right, we pick up things that don't even suit us. We, we look and we see, uh, well, Asher looked really cute in this coat. <laughs> he did. And we try to fit ourselves into these things, right? And, and they don't even fit us. Like, I can't even, you know what I'm saying? And then we go around. We walk around saying like, oh, I'm so terrible. I look so ugly. I don't fit in. I don't I don't talk like him. I don't I don't have that job. I don't have that car. Like I don't have that 401k. I don't have I don't have I don't have and I don't look and I don't look, right? And we pick up these things and it makes life feel unbearable, right? This heat is unbearable. Right? And and so then so then we feel like we can't show up like ourselves. But then on the other hand, right, what happens when we pick up those things and they do fit, right? So let's say I didn't pick up something that, that didn't work, but I picked up something that did fit, right? And I look cute and da 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 and I'm loving it. And then, and then, <laughs> and then someone comes around and like all of a sudden, my boss, the boss changed. He doesn't like me like the other boss did and I lose that job. But that job was setting me up for success. I was building that wealth, you know? And then, and then what happens when, when all of a sudden, like sickness hits my family, and my mom gets COVID, you know what I'm saying? Or, or my uncle, you know what I'm saying? Gets in a car accident, and all of a sudden my family that was supporting me gets stripped away. Thank you. What happens when those, those pieces that we had said were ours, right, that were helping us, get taken away? What happens when those things fail? And God is asking us to remember, right, that while those things may be good gifts, that it's not our identity, but that our identity is in him and him alone. You see, we were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Salvation is, is free for us, but he gave his life so that we could be free from the patterns of this world, right? From, from the opinions of others and, and have access to abundance in Christ. He hides us. Like, like we do our ID, he hides us under his wings because we're treasured and valued and see, we, we don't need to earn honor from anyone, nor do we need to prove that we're already honorable. Because when we know whose we are, when we know the person, right, whose we are, we can, we can be confident and content. We don't need to prove anything to anyone. Amen. And so I have three appeals for you today. One, if you have not accepted this gift of freedom in Christ and you want to surrender your life to him for the first time or again, or, or let's say you don't know whose you are and you want to get to know him a little bit more and you want to, to study his word, I ask you to raise your hand. Amen. And if you have lost sight of your identity and want to remi be reminded of who you are and you feel convicted that, that maybe you picked up something that, that wasn't yours or maybe you picked up something and you held it too close and you desire and God is convicting you to let some of that go I ask you to raise your hand Amen and finally if you want Jesus to be your soul's soul devotion, please stand with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, it is 
our desire that nothing be between our soul and our Savior. God, not, not the good things in life, not the bad things in life, not our desires. God, that we can surrender it all to you. That you could be ours and that will be enough. God, that we can honor you in our marriages by seeking you first. And we can honor you in our singleness by seeking you first. God, that whatever our marital status, whatever our job status, whatever our financial status, that we may know whose we are so that we can walk confidently, so that we can be content because you are a good father, because you are a faithful friend, because you will take care of everything we need, God. We need only ask you. So God, right now, I'm going to just pause and allow for your children to speak to you. Allow for them to tell you what it is they think they need. Maybe it's an area where they feel lack, God. And I pray that you speak into their life and that you show them how you satisfy, how you are showing up for them in that area at this time. God. Thank you because when we look at you, when we behold you and your goodness, we have enough. We can experience your peace and your joy and your freedom, God. Thank you for being with us forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.